hack into cybersecurity? There's a ton of content out there, and if you don't know where to start, it can be overwhelming, even paralyzing. So let's fix that. Welcome to Simply Cyber, a community of tens of thousands of aspiring and active cybersecurity professionals focused on networking, knowledge sharing, and professional development. I'm Dr. Gerald Dozier, Chief Content Creator at Simply Cyber, inviting you to get the answers to your cybersecurity problems with hundreds of cybersecurity videos answering your frequently asked questions, interviewing industry experts, and live streaming daily cyber threat briefings hosted by me. Now get the stories and insights you won't find anywhere else. Hit subscribe now and dig into all the fresh content on the channel and in the community. Nothing should stop you from launching and leveling up your cybersecurity career today. All right, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Hello. It is Thursday. Mo uh, it is Wednesday morning, September 27, 2023. Welcome to episode number 460 of Simply Saber. S Simply Sabers. Simply Saber. I guess we got the buffalo up in here. Hartford, the whale. <laughs> uh, welcome to the Simply Cyber Daily Cyber Threat Briefing Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Gerald Osher. And over the next 45 minutes, me, you, Joey K, Matt McDaniel, Bobin, Jose Alfredo, Matt McDaniel, Goldfinger, all the folks over on LinkedIn, the folks coming in hot on YouTube, squad members, community members, cybersecurity, first time in long time. We're all going to be shredding the top cybersecurity news stories of the day, and I'll be giving my expert opinion on each of those stories on what it means to you as a practitioner. So how can you operationalize it to bring cyber risk reduction to your stakeholders, either uh, tactically, like so today, <laughs> like immediately get this sorted out operationally. Maybe you, it, you integrate into your workflows and processes or strategically, right? Looking into 2024 budget season, all those things. So that's what's going to be uh, valuable to all of you. And reminder, if you're looking to break into the industry, guys, there's massive value here for you. Aside from networking with all these wonderful people in chat over there on the other side of the screen, we will be going through all this content and getting you familiar with concepts, terminology. Occasionally I go down a rabbit hole and give like a little mini lecture on some topic in the industry. But believe this, no matter what job you want in the industry, pen tester, SOC analyst, GRC analyst, whatever, you will be asked in any job interview, how do you stay current in the industry? It's just, it's something that we need people in the industry to be current all the time. That's why that's why all the practitioners are in chat right now because we need to stay up to date. And if you aren't staying up to date, that's kind of not a good look uh, in an interview. So dropping this in the interview saying you're doing this every day, mm, chef's kiss. Also, quick reminder, I do not prepare or research for any of the stories. I don't even know what the stories are uh, coming up. So, uh, you know, you're getting my raw first impressions and takes on it, which typically ends up being somewhat entertaining, somewhat educational, and always all about good times. We got the soundboard going hot. So we got that rocking and rolling today. I'm super pumped. But before we get into it, let me give some shout out and love to the stream sponsors. You guys know them so very well. We're talking about Barricade Cyber Solutions. Barricade Cyber Solutions is dedicated to helping businesses from cyber attacks and recover from the damage done. Cyber attacks can leave up, can have massive issues for businesses and said dedicated hardworking business owners into turmoil. But Barricade Cyber Solutions knows how to mitigate the damage done by cyber incidents. Check them out at barricadecyber.com. Links in the description below. Now, I also want to say much love to Panopsi Cyber. Guys, if you don't know Panopsi, get a partner who understands your cyber program and your business goals. How do they understand your program? How do they partner with you to see success for your cyber program? They literally come in. Um, they're like a trusted, uh, trusted advisor, trusted partner. If you've got an information security program, or even if you're like IT or a CIO or IT director, and you're responsible for InfoSec just because like you're the last person standing there, if you don't know what you're doing, it's okay, right? Like, it's fine. Like, let's first be real. If you don't know what you're doing or you know what you're doing, but you don't know how to take it to the next level, you don't know how to mature a program, you're you're having trouble sleeping at night because you're like, Jesus, am I even 
like protecting against the, the things that are most likely to happen, right? Wh whatever the situation is, if you want to implement a maturable, well-grounded information security program, Panopsy can help you. They can come in and look at your threat landscape, your business, your industry, your resources, your current budget, all that crap, and do a quantified risk assessment on where your real risks are, where are there low-hanging, high-risk reducing controls you can implement, and then what do you look like over a one-year, three-year type period? I'm telling you, if you want to really put in robust, appropriate, deliberate, intelligent InfoSec programs, Panopsi is where to go. Panopsi.com. Give them a link. Give them a shout. Give them some love. Links in the description. Also want to say shout out to Anti-Siphon Training, but more about them at the mid-roll. It is Wednesday, y'all, so here's a little teaser. We will be going around the world, so get ready. Get your fingers ready to... Um, to engage in that, it's the best activity of the week of the Simply Cyber Daily Cyber Threat Briefing, which is saying a lot because we do have a lot of fun stuff that goes on in here. Now, it's important to point out that each episode of the Daily Cyber Threat Briefing, just like this one, episode 100, 460, is worth half a CPE of uh, continuing professional education credits. Now, you know, Emmanuel Dark and Brad Swenson lo are looking at each other right now like, really? Half a CPE? Like, what am I going to do with that? Like, thanks. Well, here's the deal. It stacks two and a half a week, 10 a month, 30 a quarter. You will blow out your CPEs, which typically suck if you're having to like grind and, and um, uh, like stuff them at the end of a season, right? So just take a screenshot that you're here, put it in a folder, and if you ever get audited, you're off and running. But for the most part, you're going to knock out your CPEs without issue. Now, how do you do that? Guys, Say something in chat. I literally put chat on screen. That way it's always burned in and I don't take my streams down. So you can always go back and look. But it'd be a pain in the A. Sorry, Kennedy. It'd be a pain to have to go pull those. So take a screenshot. Say hashtag team live if you're here just like Eddie just did. And Emmanuel, hashtag team live. Be part of the live, the right now. If you are on replay, A, because you're uh, asleep right now. Left Coast Love, what's up? Good to see you. Hawaii and Cali. If maybe you started a new job, boom, and you're at work right now because you're in cybersecurity and you'll get to this at uh, an appropriate time, no problem. Hashtag team replay in the comments. Team replay are people too. I love myself some team replay. And then finally, shout out to my one of my favorites, hashtag first timer. We make it uh, an effort here on Simply Cyber's community to reach out and find new people and bring them in and share what we're doing here. So if today is your first Simply Cyber Daily Cyber Threat Briefing podcast, welcome to the stream and hashtag first timer in chat. Let us know that today's your first time. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by the reception by the people who are already in here and regularly members of hashtag team live. Now, guys, it is Wednesday, which means only one thing. My favorite activity. We're about to go around the world. What does this mean? All right, guys, so check it out. Let me get my little uh, graphic up here. Let me do my little thingy-me-jiggy here. All right, guys, listen. Worldwide Wednesday is an amazing activity, and it's presented by IT Pro TV. Now IT Pro from ACI Learning, the international online training solution that professionals in audit, cyber, and IT turn to for binge-worthy content. You can use my promo code, simply cyber 30 it's on the screen right in front of you, to get 30 additional percent off your first month or first year. Also want to point out, if you're a veteran, a first responder, or a teacher, you get 60% off. I do not know the code for that. I only know my code. So if you want, dig a little deeper, get 60% off. A ACI Learning has phenomenal content. The library, the depth, the, um, the, the instructors, everything about it is excellent. I, I'm very, very happy to be affiliated with them. Again, go check it out. There's a link in the description below that takes you there, but... Um, um, I'll drop a link in chat, right? Oh, there's actually, I have a pinned comment right now. There's a pinned comment. So go ahead and check it out. But right now, thank you, ACI Learning, for sponsoring Worldwide Wednesday. Now, let's go around the world. Now, if you're not familiar with this activity, in about 30 seconds, I'm going to ask you, where are you? And the Simply Cyber community is so amazing that we typically have somebody live on every continent, including Central America and the Middle East. Now, it is a little bit of a, uh, a fire drill for me up here as I try to do this, which is part of the uh, experience, but let's do it. So guys, I'm gonna set the clock to two minutes. 
Mods, get ready. All right, here we go. Two minutes. Let's rock and roll. Tell me, where are you? Where are you at? Let's go, South America. Come on in. Let's get hot. Here we go. Belgium's in the house. Bjorn bringing us online with the Europe right away. Belgium, Belgium, Belgium. Where's Belgium, Belgium, Belgium? Ah, you gave me a tough one, Bjorn, right off the rip. Oh, where's Belgium, bro? Netherlands, Denmark, Sweden. Oh, Poland. Oh, we'll come back. We'll come back. Texas, I see you. Europe, just say your Canada's online. All right, we got some big ones. Charleston, South Carolina, low country. What's up, Louisiana? Hey, Pueblo, Colorado. India's in the house. Nice job, India. What's up, Turks, Caicos? I'll get you afterwards. Minnesota's in here. What's up, India? I see you, Florida. Hey, Romania, we got you online. Do do do. Romania bringing Europe on. Although Bjorn is going to get credit for the first year. South Africa, Africa is online. We've got the African continent up in here. DR in the house. Leonardo always bringing the heat. Boom, DR, I got you. I see you, Texas. What's up? What's up, America? Represent Ethiopia, Eastern Africa, coming online. Hey, PR, I see you, Puerto Rico. Very nice, Illinois. Hey, Greenwood, South Carolina. What's up, upstate? Belgium, between France and Netherlands, thank you. There it is, I got you, Bjorn. I see France also. Nice job, everybody. Louisiana. Hey, what's up, Kenya? I see you. Where are you, Kenya? Boom. More Eastern Africa. I see you, Brooklyn. What's up? Nigeria's coming online. Dude, Africa's got super strong presence. We've got Saudi, the Middle East cracking on us. Let's go. Nigeria's in the house. Houston, Texas. Hey, Afghanistan. What's up? Good morning or good afternoon. Come on, South America, where are you at? Hey, Michigan, you on the UP? Let us know. Detroit, all right, I see it. Maryland's in the house, hey, South Carolina. I do love myself some South Carolina, especially the low country. I see London, I see France, Shuttle Crab, you're hilarious. Ghana, dude. All right, where, well, hold on, I got it. Where's Ghana? Ghana's on the left coast, isn't it? There it is, Ghana. All right, guys. So check it out really quick. Uh, let me, I'm going to go through the, um, hey, Tom Bishop, I should have known. I should have marked that right away. All right, let me go through uh, mod chat really quick. I saw Mexico. I got the DR already. Um, I got <laughs> Asia. Uh, Canada's done. Kenya's done. DR's done. Ethiopia's done. Italy's done. Mexico's done. France is done. Uh, Sicily, Australia. All right, so I think that's all of them. Let's check it out. Oh, there's, I'm, I'm going to, we're going to give Jezbo credit for Australia. So guys, just taking a look at the map right now, looks like we got, uh, again, we have Australia, we have Asia, we have the Middle East, Africa with very strong representation. We've nuked North America, so there's no question about that. Um, and Europe is in here, Central America. We'll say, we'll give DR credit for Central America. Um, guys, South America, again, can we, we need a concerted effort to like reach out to Team South America and get them, Sean and Kelly, close enough. Uh, no, we didn't get Ireland, but uh, we'll, we'll take credit for it right now. All right, guys. Hey, shout out to everybody for Simply so Oh, South Korea was here. All right, hold on one second. South Korea. All right, we got you. Guys, I want to say shout out and thanks to everybody, including ACI Learning. Uh, Worldwide Wednesday was fun. This is two weeks in a row. We have not gone fully around the world because of South America. Um I don't know if anyone's got some ideas on how to get into there, uh, but we got we to gotta giddy up on South America stat. All right, guys. <clears throat> now we've had our fun, but now it's time to work. So do me a favor. Sit back, relax, and let's let the cool sounds of the hot news Mercy! wash over all of us in an awesome wave. I will see you all at the mid-roll. From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. It's Wednesday, September 27th, 2023. Multiple threat actors lay claim to Sony Hack. A threat actor that surfaced last month, ransomed VC, claims they've compromised Sony systems and are attempting to sell 260 gigabytes of data for $2.5 million on the dark web. 
However, Ransom to VC so far has only published two megabytes of data, including a PowerPoint presentation, some Java source code, and Eclipse IDE screenshots. Meanwhile, another threat actor, Major Nelson, has claimed responsibility for the attack on breached forums. Major Nelson has leaked over 3 gigabytes of data, including the data leaked by Ransomed VC, but also containing credentials for Sony's internal systems, including Sonar Cube, Creators Cloud, certificates, license generating emulators, and incident response policies. Major Nelson said, quote, Ransomed VCs are scammers who are just trying to scam you and chase influence. Enjoy the leak, end quote. Sony said it's investigating the situation and declined further comment. All right. So a lot going on here. Um, th there's a lot going on here. Okay. Uh, I, I love it, by the way. It, it, it always kind of um, gives me like a perverse pleasure uh, to see threat actors like kind of consuming each other, <laughs> uh, which, is, which is what's happening here. There's a legitimate hardworking threat actor criminal named Major Nelson who's absolutely getting undermined by another criminal named Ransom VC, who's basically a hack, right? And I don't mean like a, a, a hoodie dark room hack. I mean like, a, you know, just a, like, a, you know, a hack, basically a poser. Okay, before we get into it, I do want to say shout out to the first timers. We have a, a cavalcade of first timers in chat right now. Shout out to William Caleb Leitner, Abraham Okor, Oko, Oko Rogba, Sean Kelly, Pathu uh, Watcherma over on LinkedIn, Ubaid Khan over on LinkedIn, Isaiah Jarvis, and Tico. Oh my God, guys. Let's go. Are you serious? You first timers are coming in like a wrecking ball, son. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you all so very much. I hope all of you long timers and you first timers enjoy the stream and continue to come back and tell your friends. Okay guys, so let's get back into this, right? So Sony gets hacked again. You remember a couple years ago when uh, the interview was released with James Franco and Seth Rogen, Seth Rogen. Yeah. Um, North Korea, uh, you know, attacked Sony. They made it look like it was an ideological motivation, but basically Kim Jong-un was all pissy because he got portrayed in bad light in the movie and they leaked the movie. Uh, they, they did all these, uh, I think they did wiper, uh, viruses across, um, Sony infrastructure anyways. So Sony, sh first of all, my first thought is no business is going to be 100% secure, especially a large enterprise like Sony. Second of all, you would hope that they would have implemented strong controls based on that experience of getting completely pwned. Uh, Hey, what's up, Cindy, Cindy with the gifted subs. Hey, first timers. And long timers, let me just share with you. Did we just become best friends? Yep. If you didn't know, uh, Cindy just gifted five memberships. So Funky Monk, Michael Romaine, um, Johnny Dupree, and a couple others. Michelle Dang just became squad members. So definitely take advantage of the squad emote. Cindy, thanks so much for uh, sharing the love and sponsoring those uh, five accounts. So guys, here's the deal. Um... First of all, Sony getting hacked is no good. Uh, really what I want to call your attention to is this Ransom VC is basically claiming um, that they are the threat actor that did it. Now, obviously, because Sony is a major um, business, uh, it's going to get a lot of pub. A lot of non-infosec people, like reporters, journalists, etc., are going to pick up on this and say, whoa, and start spreading that Ransom VC is the attacker because Ransom VC dropped a couple uh, pieces of evidence to, to, or, you know, leaked to suggest that they actually were the threat actors that had done it. Now, I think that they're trying to ransom uh, some money from Sony. I kind of missed that at the beginning. But the point is, they are a fraudulent because, uh, uh, you know, depend, choose your own adventure, right? Major Nelson, another threat actor, is saying that they have three gigs or 30 gigs worth of data, which is an awful lot to um, to have versus what Ransom VC had, which was like a PowerPoint and a screenshot or something like that. Major Nelson has the same content that Ransom VC has plus more. So I almost think what happened was Major Nelson leaked a couple things on dark web forums about Major Nelson's attack of Sony and Ransom VC, probably a young person, okay? Um, grabbed it up and went YOLO and was like, I'm going to, I'm going to go viral. Watch me, watch me now. Like, watch me, 
watch me now. <laughs> right. And major Nelson's like, dude, you're punk. Like I, I literally worked my a off to get this uh, data leak and I'm going to get paid for it. You can't, you can't do that. So again, remember there is, there are ransom, uh, ransomware, particularly there are criminal gangs, but there are threat actor groups that work together. But for the most part, um, hackers, dark web operators, cyber criminals and stuff like that, they operate kind of independent of each other. And there's no, there's no way to stop one from attacking another, right? Because law enforcement, <laughs> law enforcement isn't going to like, you can't call law enforcement and be like, Hey, I'm a criminal, but some criminal stole my, my booty. Uh, so I, I want you to go get them. Right. So we'll see what's up. Sony is definitely going to, um, have to release a statement soon uh, regarding this. So keep an eye out for it. Uh, but I would I would strongly suggest, based on what I'm seeing, that Major Nelson is the actual um, uh, threat actor behind this attack and that the ransom VC thing is going to get blown up. Philippines Health Org struggling to recover from ransomware attack. The Philippines Universal Healthcare System, PhilHealth, is reeling from the effects of a security incident they announced on Friday. PhilHealth's CEO said Monday that access to member portals and e-claims were taken offline as part of its containment efforts. Members have been forced to pay for benefits over the counter, and PhilHealth has added 60 days to the claims filing period. PhilHealth said no personal or medical data was leaked. However, the Medusa ransomware gang who took credit for the attack has given PhilHealth 10 days to pay a $300,000 ransom to delete the member data it stole and decrypt the data they encrypted. Law enforcement agencies have been engaged to help investigate the incident. All right. Hey, really quickly in the Philippines, I, I, I only know this because I briefly uh, had had what started to be an engagement with the Philippines healthcare system and then it didn't happen. Um, they have a universal healthcare system, kind of like um, in Europe or, or the UK. Right. So um, so all the data is consolidated. There are benefits to having monolithic data sets. Right. Like ease of access and and you know, one record to rule them all. But then obviously when, when, one of them, when it gets breached, uh, it's a hot mess on fire because uh, now all the data, you know, all your base belong to us, essentially. One thing that caught my ear right away is that this ransomware threat actor, they only want $300,000, which I know, believe me, guys, $300,000 would make, you know, would make things very comfortable over here at the Osier house, right? If just 300 grand dropped into my lap. But in the scheme of things, when you think of a ransomware threat actor ransom demand against a country, right? 300 grand is not that much, right? Philippines GDP. Let me just take a look at this. Yeah, Philippines GDP is $394 billion, right? They're asking for 300,000, which if you do the math, I think is like a tenth of a percent, right? Hold on, like, let me just see, 394 billion, right? That's 394 million. So there's billion times 0.1, right? So is that right? Hold on, that's 10%, right? So did I do this math wrong? Why is it, why, why is a simple calculator app not working? It like times 0.1 is not times one, let's do 0.01. No, bro. Is it a is it a hundredth of a percent? Holy shoot, dude! Is it, dude? I guess the TLDR here is that three million nine. Dude, holy crap! I was way off. Th they're asking for tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions. They're asking. <laughs> Jesus. The threat actors are asking for one millionth of a percent of the Philippines GDP. Okay, I'm not into supporting threat actors it's, and ransomware operators. It's like funding terrorism. But guys, <laughs> for one millionth of a percent of your of your GDP, I think you can swing it. Like I, again, like I mean, I I don't know about you guys, but cash, homie. like, dude, like how quickly. How much is the Philippines universal healthcare system losing? And I know they're not a for-profit center, but dude, a, a, a one millionth of a percent, you know, I don't know. Do the, like, I don't know. 
guys, uh, like, I, I feel like the, the executives are like, bro, like, why are you even bringing this to me? Just like, cut the check. Let's go. All right. Um, so also want to shout out the Philippines. We've had some Filipino, um, uh, simply cyber community members show up pretty regularly. So, um, you know, shout out to all of you, uh, if you're here. Okay. So, uh, really quick, Jessica Probst is, or, um, Rob Ellis saying that they probably live there. Rent is like 203. Yeah. Let, I, let me see average salary in Philippines. I'm just curious. It's 160. 1000 Philippine dollars. The average salary in the Philippines was $3,218 a year. Holy crap. The median salary in the Philippines was $12,000 a year. 12,000 USD. Wow. So if it is a Filipino threat actor, 300 grand may actually seem quite quite significant, right? I mean, that's like uh what is that? That's like 30 years of work. So everything's relative, I guess. But whoever the threat actor is that's asking for 300 grand, I don't know if they didn't do their due diligence and like do their their research um, to figure out what the market is. On average, guys, I just gave a talk on this last two weeks ago or something like that. Uh, in 2022, the average uh, ransomware threat actor payment, not request for payment, not the highest payment, but on average, when there is a transaction of victim money to a threat actor to pay for a decryption key or to pay for not releasing the data, on average, it's about $597,000, okay? On average. So 300 grand is like half of that, you know? So it's definitely left of the bell curve. Very interesting. Canadian Flair Airlines leaked user data for months. Researchers discovered that ultra-low-cost carrier Canadian Flare Airlines exposed customer data for at least seven months. The carrier's flyflare.com website exposed the site's environment files containing MySQL database credentials, the carrier's email account credentials and secret tokens, and app keys. At least one subdomain was collecting private user info, including names, emails, phone numbers, and flight details. Researchers issued several notifications about the flaw, including to the Canadian Computer Emergency Response Team, before the vulnerability was finally resolved. Bro. Bro. This is a public-facing environment file, right? You can see, well, I can't zoom in, but the ENV file. Guys, like, this is not, what is it? OCR Labs, ENV file. Uh, uh, security researcher finding like, dude, like just, this was a, this is April of 23, right? This is just a few months ago, right? Look, does this look familiar? Does this look familiar? It's a freaking environmental file, f internet facing, public facing, same data, same thing, API keys, database credentials, sensitive accounts. You can just access databases like you're a you know, sysadmin, no big deal. Like you're a, <coughs> excuse me, a root user. Guys, this is not the same story, but it looks very similar. So whoever is over at Can Canada Flair, Canadian Flair Airlines, is obviously not a member of the Simply Cyber community because they would have seen this story. I remember covering it for... Sorry, Kennedy. Just, dude, if, 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 if you don't learn from mistakes, you will repeat them. It's a, that's a fact, man. And that's why this is yet, like, this is evidence of why it's so critical to stay up to date on what the heck is going on. Okay? So from a practitioner perspective, it looks like you, I mean, you could do a, um, a, a retrospective across the audit logs to see if, this data was accessed um, by an unauthorized party. This does not mean that it was authorized by an unauthorized party. This means that security researchers discovered it and alerted Canadian Flair Airlines. So we don't know if there was a data breach or not. Second of all, uh, and this is kind of funny, like if you don't know um, how long your logs are going back, right? Like let's say Windows logs are set for 30 days. This has been leaking for months. So you're gonna have a, a blind spot in your incident response when you're trying to say, hey, did threat actors ever access this information? Do we need to release a statement of a public data breach? Do we need to pay for two years of identity theft protection for all of our customers? Which, by the way, isn't free. Straight cash, homie. Well, I don't know, boss. Let me go look at the audit logs. Well, we can only look back to August 26th because we don't pay for log uh, retention. Why not? Oh, because, you know, 
Straight cash, homie. Again, follow the money. Like, you didn't want to fund my budget request in uh <laughs> in April of 23, when I saw OCR Labs had this data breach, I asked, hey, we should really increase our, our budget for log retention so we can do this if we ever get caught. And you told us, just make sure we don't ever get caught or we don't have public facing environment files, fix the problem up front. That way we don't need to ever go back in the logs and look to see if we've ever been breached. Well, guess how that worked out. Um, it sucks. This is yet another thing. If you are using cloud-based, like if cloud apps is part of your infrastructure, if you are doing CI, CD, if you're delivering solutions and you have these environment files to access databases, to access, um, you know, applications and stuff, it's, it's imperative upon you to look for these files and make sure that they're not inadvertently publicly facing. Furthermore, you should set up some type of continuous checking just because um, Dream Logic Inc. has, you know, this environment file and it's properly protected today on Wednesday doesn't mean th this Friday, you know, some junior engineers tinkering around in there. Oh. And it's like, oh, like, oh, it's not working. Oh, it's not working. Set to public. Oh, it's working. Good night. I'm going to the happy hour because I'm 24 and I'm all about, you know, I'm all about that action. You see what I'm saying? So you need to be continuous in your exposure management. Now, this is not a paid, um, this is not a paid sponsorship or anything like that, but I just want to share this really quickly. This is a company called Fortrace. And it's run by Nick Ascoli, who's an awesome guy. I interviewed him at Black Hat. Uh, is there like a website? What What the heck? This, this company is... Here, visit website. This company right here is like literally designed. All they do is find your company's exposed data. Again, this isn't a paid placement. I just know what they do. So if you are unsure if you've got this problem, this company... That's all they do is find those problems for you. So again, just saying. Um, yeah, exactly. I, I love I love <laughs> VSEC. So hey, like this is the junior engineer on Friday. Oh, it's not working. It's not working. Set environment file to public. Boom, baby. We're ruling. We're rocking. Microsoft rolls out support for pass keys in Windows 11. On Tuesday, Microsoft officially rolled out support for passkeys in Windows 11 as part of a major update to the desktop operating system. The feature allows users to log into websites and applications using their device pin or biometric information without having to provide a username and password. Passkeys are based on FIDO standards and offer a strong, phishing-resistant replacement for passwords. Passkeys have been adopted by Apple, Google, and a number of other <coughs> services in recent months. Yeah, dude. And Get on board. Like, hey, if, if you haven't been paying attention, passwords are going away. And I know it's going to take, you know, another decade or two uh, for them to fully go away. And, and why, Jerry? Why would it take so long? Because, like, we have legacy tech. Go look at any... <laughs> go look at any industrial control system. Go look at any... Um, business that's trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents and some of the legacy tech that they're running in their in their server rooms which is basically a closet in a hallway and a door that isn't locked in fact they leave the door open because it gets hot in there they need to like that's how they cool their server room okay there's legacy tech everywhere you're not going to get away from passwords anytime soon which is why you need password vaults uh not reusing passwords not allowing carl, carl! to have crappy passwords and stuff like that but but my point is this is yet another step, another brick in the wall of um, going away from passwords. And I, 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 I appreciate, um, I appreciate Microsoft and other, you know, Google and stuff like that for being um, forward facing and in, in trying to drive that. They don't need to, but they're choosing to, and I love it. So, little Pink Floyd reference, right? Little brick in the wall action. Um, slowly, steadily, consistently, guys. That, the name of the game in InfoSec is consistency, and it just—it's just like you know, do a little bit more each day, and eventually you'll look back and you'll like. If you take one step every day, it might not seem like you're making progress, but if you look back in a, in a month or you know a year or you know three years, whatever it is, you're going to be stunned at how much progress you've made. And I know that's like for the micro level and like your individual career or something like that. But like Microsoft, Google, 
Amazon, like they are, they are moving towards this and they're driving it. And for, I, for one, am happy because passwords, guys, there's a reason phishing emails are trying to get your creds. There's a reason there's all sorts of significant stories about passwords. There's a reason why this freaking story right here is about leaked passwords and how you could access databases through passwords, right? Passwords are a problem. They were fine. They're not fine anymore. They can be guessed. They can be brute forced. They can be leaked. They can be, <laughs> they can just be terrible, right? So. Now a word from our sponsor, App Omni. If you think Casby's effectively secure your SaaS data, think again. Casby's lack visibility into your SaaS estate, nor can they address and detect risks that arise from SaaS apps unlimited endpoints. What you need is a robust SSPM designed to secure the dynamic and extensible nature of SaaS apps and their data. That's where App Omni comes in. We continuously monitor your SaaS estate <coughs> to detect cyber risks and secure your company's most critical data and workflows. Get started at appomni.com. That's A P P O M N I dot com. Yeah. Welcome, uh, Mark, first timer. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where's Mark? It is some. Mark, I think it's Mark Roberts. Do, do, do. All right. I, I, I lost where it is. But, anyways, welcome, Mark. I saw a first timer come in here. Uh, Leonardo Nunez, have a strong password policy, not just lengthen my latest engagement. I found. Someone with a 15 character long password, but it only contained one ones and twos. This support would get would get mitigated this. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, that's terrible. Uh, people should be using passphrases. You shouldn't you should have password complexity. Guys, really quick, this is a speculative hot take, and I know like we're at the mid-roll. Speculative hot take. In my environment, guys, I'm fine. I'm fine if you never change your password, okay? But I'm gonna want it to be 24 characters or more. It's going to be complex. And you know what I mean? Like, I, like it's going to be a passphrase, frankly. And no, no one else is like, you're not really going to, um, if, you know, if I get detected in a breach or you get fished, obviously you have to change your password. But I'm less about changing your password. I'm more about having a very unique, very long, very complex password. Okay? That's what's up. All right. Uh, and thanks for sharing, Leonardo. Uh, Mark Roberts. Yeah. Ha uh, first timer. Good to have you. All right, guys. So Mark and other first timers, right? So Mark and uh, Abraham, William Caleb, Isaiah Jarvis, Tico, etc. This is what we do on the mid roll. Guys, I want to thank all of you, you first timers, your long timers, your mods, um, squad members, people like Alex Goodwin, NSA Virus Lab, Dream Logic, Priceless Pancakes, Carrie, so, so many of you that show up on the regular and make this community amazing. Do, do me a favor, guys. If, if you want to pay it forward, if you want to give back to the community in a very simple, easy way, hit the like button on YouTube right now. It will trigger the algorithm when enough people hit the like button because all of you like cyber content. This is a cyber show. It will go reach out to other people who are doing cyber searches and tell them about our show. And that's how we grow the community. Uh, we're at 352 people live in chat right now. Let's see if we can uh, crush it, okay? All right, guys, want to say shout out and thanks to the stream sponsors again, Barricade Cyber Panopsi. Also, Anti-Siphon Training. Really quickly, Anti-Siphon Training is here to disrupt the traditional training industry by providing high-quality, cutting-edge education to everyone, everyone, regardless of financial positions. They have top talent teaching the classes, and it's hands-on lab environments as well as theoretical lecture lessons. There's massive value here. And it's pay what you can. Use the link in my description below. Go to the training tab. Go to pay what you can. I'm doing it live on stream right now. Scroll down and you can see the upcoming course schedule of these pay what you can. On October 3rd, 2023, they have a $0 if you want, 0 to whatever you want to pay, introduction to PCI. If you wanted to learn PCI, which by the way is a niche thing in our industry but people hire for it just so you know like i i've worked in environments with pci i don't really know i know enough about pci to like to handle it but like i'm not a pci expert this would be major value and again it's pay what you can guys the simply cyber community challenge is an ongoing initiative that allows all of us to build our own network and get value from the network as well as deliver value to the network 
Every single day, one member of the community gets the baton. Yesterday, Jacob Quinton got the baton. I don't know if Jacob's in chat right now, but Jacob's going to tag somebody or I will tag somebody in Jacob's uh, absence. J whoever gets the baton, just like Jacob yesterday, go on to LinkedIn, do the hash uh, write a, a post. What's your cyber story? Add the hashtag Simply Cyber Community Challenge. Now, here's the deal. It, oh, listen, if you want to grow your LinkedIn network and make your LinkedIn feed only have really valuable, really interesting, really supportive cybersecurity content, only if you want that, here is how you hack it. Go on LinkedIn, search for this hashtag. This is, we're the only ones doing this. Search for this hashtag and then comment on the posts that are using this hashtag. Then, that's step one, comment on the post. Then two, connect with the people who are posting and commenting. And because you commented, other people that come in behind you are going to connect with you. You will get picked up in the Peloton. People in chat will tell you definitively, this works. In a few weeks, your network's gonna be super, you know, much bigger than it is right now. And it's not gonna be randoms and bots. It's going to be meaningful connections of cybersecurity people. And your LinkedIn feed is going to be massively value. This is, this is another like just initiative of the Simply Cyber community to maintain our core values of inclusion and support and helping enable people to, you know, basically help themselves launch and level up a cybersecurity career. So get on it, Simply Cyber Community Challenge. We'll make sure someone gets tagged right now uh, in chat. Guys, before I get back into it, I do want to tell you, special reminder to the Simply Cyber community of cybersecurity and IT pros, we have a very special Simply Cyber Live tomorrow, this Thursday. As we navigate the evolving tech landscape, there's one platform making waves, the Intel V Pro platform. We welcome Gary Binder, very smart guy, very nice guy, this Thursday, September 28th at 3.30 p.m., 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time on our live stream. We're diving deep into the capabilities. Learn how Intel V Pro is not just a platform, but a solution enhancing business continuity, manageability, and fortifying security. If you're serious about staying at the forefront of IT innovation, this is one discussion you can't afford to miss. Set a reminder and let's discuss organizational cyber risk reduction together live. Can't wait. It's going to be great. EU calls for safeguards to address AI deepfake election risks. On Tuesday, European Union's Commissioner Vera Jourova called for stronger efforts to address the risks AI-generated disinformation may pose to next year's European Parliament elections. Jourova has called upon mainstream <laughs> platforms to inform users about the synthetic origin of content posted online. The EU's Voluntary Anti-Disinformation Code currently has 44 signatories, including major social media and search platforms, as well as advertisers and civil society organizations involved in fact-checking. Jourova planned to meet with ChatGPT maker OpenAI later on Tuesday to discuss the issue, although the AI giant is not currently a signatory to the code. All right. So a couple things here. One, um, you know, if you know me, if you've been around for a while, like I, <laughs> I have been banging the drum since 2015, frankly, that deep fakes was going to be materially involved in an election issue this year. Okay. Not 2023, but like whatever this year is, it's like a, you know, <laughs> VAR this year equals you know, current year, right? For, for for those who understand programming and a little nerd joke there, okay? <laughs> um, I say it every year, you know, for like predictions around New Year's Eve and every year it's never really, it's never really happened. Again, this year, we got the 2024 election coming up in uh, about a year and I think it's really going to be here. So with AI coming out in March of 23, not coming out, but like going full steam, um, there's a lot more opportunity. There's a lot more effort. I've seen some interesting concepts around using um, AI in order to uh, create, you know, basically weaponize for misinformation campaigns. And let me just share one with you. Imagine, if you will, like it. It's easy if you see some account, per, you know, pushing out some type of misinformation, fake information, right? Like, oh, like whatever the the candidate whoever the candidate is the candidate was involved in a sexual assault right like whatever and 
you look at the account and it's it's been it's it was created 15 minutes ago or yesterday, right? And you're like, all right, that's an indicator of like BS. Or it was created a year ago, but it's got you know no posts and then just like one post, uh, and it's the misinformation one, right? So you're like, well, not really digging it. Well, think about this for a second. What if you use AI to create 365? you know, generic posts around elections, right? With a, and you could even say, pretend you're a Republican or a hard, you know, hardline Republican or hardline Democrat, whatever you want, right? And then write 365 tweets uh, to me, right? It would pump it out. Then you, you know, copy paste it. Now write me a Python script that posts once a day at a random interval between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Eastern time to this Twitter account one of these tweets, right? Boom, done. And then you just set it up as a cron job or, or you know, a scheduled task or whatever. And it's off and running. You don't have to touch it again, but you're making this like really compelling, real looking sock puppet account, right? That's just one way to do it. So th- there's a lot more, there's a lot more like attack surface, frankly, around all of this. Now the deep fakes is around making someone look like they're there when they're not. With Mid Journey and Dolly and all this stuff, we've already we've already literally seen um, political ads leveraging AI art in order to make the ad campaigns. I'm not going to bring one up right now, but I've seen them. Um, you know, you can tell because like they have like nine fingers if you look closely and stuff like that. But the the point is. It, it's out there. It's more accessible. You don't need to be like a computer scientist to like map it over. You don't need as much raw uh, input data in order to make it look real, right? We would see it look real with like movie actresses, right? Because there's a ton of like raw inputs and a corpus of movie actress face data in order to put it on, uh, a, you know, a model's body or some other person's body and make their faces, right? We've seen the Tom Cruise one very famous, right? Well, now you don't need as much, you don't need as much raw inputs, which makes it a wider attack surface for more people to be victimized and exploited and and, and deep faked, if you will. And it lowers the bar for threat actors to do it. So it's really a perfect storm. If you think about it, there's more opportunity and there's more threat actors. You know, what's going to happen there, right? Um, Google assigns new critical CVE to bug <laughs> exploited in attacks. Google has assigned a new CVE ID to a bug initially disclosed as a Chrome weakness under active exploitation and for which Google issued a patch two weeks ago. Google's new CVE now identifies the bug as a critical heap buffer overflow issue in the WebP library and assigned a maximum severity of 10 out of 10. This update has significant implications for other projects using the open source library, including 1Password, Signal, Safari, Mozilla Firefox, Microsoft Edge, Opera, and native Android web browsers. Organizations must now address the reclassified critical issue across these platforms to ensure the security of user data. Um, New- all right, hold on one second. Um... This is a big deal. Hold on. Like, again, I don't prep or research this, so um, give me, please grant me the grace of a moment, okay? Okay. Okay, so this is really, um, this is really interesting, okay? Okay. Um, okay. So a couple things going on here. One, this C- CVE 2023-4863, which is classified under Google and reported as a Google Chrome, um, has a base score of eight, which is reported here um, at, at NIST, but they said in the story it's a 10 and Google's referenced it as a 10. The problem is in the WebP library, right? Uh, which is not specific to Google Chrome, the, and this is this is the this is part of the problem. Okay, let me see if I can find more information on it. So, so here's the deal: the WebP format is used to encode and decode images, and it's used all over the place. Like if you've accident not accidentally, but like if you ever tried to like download an image off the internet and you get like a WebP file, like that that's where I see it a lot. But it is used 
it's used on websites, used on the internet, used all over the place in browsers, Safari, Chrome, Firefox, whatever. They know how to ingest and handle and they process like with a, a, a lib web p engine basically the image now there's a zero day flaw in the image and it's a buffer overflow so don't say that those don't exist in 2023 i don't know what the impact is typically it'll say you can um it can okay it can allow a remote attacker to perform an out of bo a bounds memory write via crafted html page okay so here's the deal a special web page, which if you can trick somebody to go visit, right, or you attach it as a, uh, a thing, or you sign up on Google Ads um, and you have it show up as a advertisement um, randomly in people's feeds, right? So malvertising type attack, watering hole type attack. You can exploit the browser. Now, I don't know exactly what the impact is. An out of bounds memory write simply means that you're able to right out of bounds, but like you can write to the memory, right? You can write to the stack, which means you should be able to do control flow and send the instruction pointer to some other piece of code, right? So technically you might be able to, um, a, a classic buffer overflow, you would, you would write like your own kind of uh, shell code to get like a, 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 sh a shell or some type of like reach out for something else. Uh, and then when you overflow the boundary, you point the pointer, the instruction pointer back to the shell code that you um, wrote into the the, the, the the space, right? The memory space. And then you you basically control flow and now you control code execution and, and boom, you own the box. So this would typically, this would go outside the scope of Chrome and allow you to execute code on the operating system of the victim machine, right? So that's obviously not good. Now, what's important here is that Google classified this as a bug in Google Chrome. So say you're like a Linux user, or you're a hardline Apple user, and you're like, bro, I run Safari, get up off my back, right? You're still at risk. And there's also um, kind of SaaS products, like they mentioned in the in the story, 1Password, for example, that isn't using a browser per se, but it's using... Um, web technologies, and they use the lib webp engine. So this lib webp module essentially is rolled out all over the place, right? And if you think it's only Google Chrome, you may miss the obvious thing. Now, it looks like other businesses, other products, other vendors are releasing their own CVEs around it. And reporters, journalists, or whatever are reaching out to Google to get them to explain why they classified it the way they did. It seems very un-Google-like, honestly. Google, even though they say do no evil, Google is um, pretty good, in my opinion. Microsoft is also pretty good about kind of, from a security perspective, being an advocate, being a champion, doing right by, you know, end users. <laughs> and, and also hooking up practitioners like you and I. Uh, so this seems a little uh, uncommon for them, but the TLDR here is that you should absolutely be mindful of where this libwebp exists. If you see any products or solutions in your environment uh, where you get an advisory from the vendor about libwebp, um, you should totally uh, pay attention and patch if you can or make accommodations if you can. Again, a, a crafted web page sent to a user if they go and and view the web page it will potentially exploit and allow code execution which is bad right obviously and with google giving a 10.0 which is the highest rated severity uh, um that that to me indicates it's being actively exploited in the wild and let me just tell you 9.8 is typically the high, like so cves are the score for vulnerabilities and there's three elements to it base score temporal score and environmental score right because everybody's got different environments but but the tldr if you're just like want to quick and dirty is the highest you'll ever see is 10 it's it's 0 to 10 but the highest you'll ever see is 9.8 if it's not actively being exploited 9.8 means bro we've got time we're left of boom like get your crap together and figure it out where this is Anything over 9.8, so basically 10. I've, I've never seen 9.9. .9. If it becomes 10, that's an indicator to you that that is being actively exploited in the wild. 
And we don't know if it's just sophisticated threat actors or if there's a POC out there or if there's just like a straight GitHub, right-click, download, fire, and forget, Metasploit module. But that's the TLDR. 9.8, you got a little bit of time and you really, your pants are on fire. 10, your entire bar is like fully um, <laughs> engulfed in flames, right? Hold on, this is appropriate. We don't use this emote very often, but uh, this is a 10.0 right there. The dog, this is fine. That's a 10.0, all right? So LibWebP, and by the way, final thoughts on this. This is why Software Bill of Materials is so important because you might not know where LibWebP is. Zero font phishing campaign displays fake AV scans. A threat actor is using zero point fonts in emails to make them appear as safely scanned by security tools in Microsoft Outlook. This phishing technique <clears throat> aims to evade security filters by inserting invisible benign terms that mix with suspicious visible content skewing AI security checks. Although this technique has been used as far back as 2018, the latest phishing campaign observes emails using zero-point fonts to hide invisible bogus security scan messages that display in the email listing pane. Experts warn that this technique could make a massive difference in the effectiveness of phishing operations by giving the recipient a false sense of security. RSA. All right, hold on. Um, uh, all right. I, you know what? Guys, I love it. I'm going to be kind of quick because we're getting close on time. But like hat tip to the threat actors. Guys, you know, I, I, I don't like them. I mean, I'm in the business of stopping them. But I do, I do rec you know, game recognizes game, right? Like when they do clever things, I, I, I like it. So here is the deal. <clears throat> If you are relying on some next-gen AI solution to be your email security gateway, right? So emails come in, you have some engine that scans them. If they're malicious, they file them in the uh, the round filing cabinet, which is a trash can, basically, just pfft, gone, right? Usually they put them in quarantine. That way you can go and unquarantine them if it's a mistake. But for the most part, it fires them in the trash and then if it's legit, it sends it to your end users. Well, what threat actors are doing now is they're putting additional content in the emails, but they're setting the font size to zero. That's it, right? Very, very simple, very, very clever. So, you know, normally your font size is 12. Maybe you want to, maybe like Jan is doing a bake sale this weekend and you want to really, really call attention to it. So you bump the font up to like 75, lots of exclamation points, right? Scroll down to see more, right? Whatever. If you make the font size zero, it's there but it doesn't have it doesn't have any size it can't be seen but when the ai is reading it it doesn't realize or it doesn't care that it's font 0 font 12 font 45 because the ai isn't reading it for human consumption it doesn't care it's reading the text so if you put in a lot of crap and a lot of sorry kennedy a lot of jargon and a lot of bs to m confuse and mix up the ai next gen searching well, it's going to pass it on as legit because it's not going to see um, that it's it's malicious, right? Very clever, very clever way. And something to think about on a way to trick AI. And those who are going to be doing job interviews and stuff like that, it's worth um, taking note of this particular story because businesses are going to be impacted by this immediately, right? Because everybody's getting email. Email is a major attack vehicle or a major attack vector. And this is a clever kind of easy thing to digest and discuss across an interview table. Um, and it shows that you're staying current and it show like you here. I could see this as a real question in an interview. What are your thoughts about how AI is going to affect the industry right now? Most people are like, Oh, it's, you know, replacing jobs. It's making jobs easier. It, you know, it does tier zero type triaging. Yeah. Those are all the clever, compelling ones. How about this where AI is being used for email security gateway yet. It's not effective. Well, that's a compelling, different, fresh perspective to bring to an interview table, get minds popping, get hair blown back, right? Like I said, bring an extra pair of socks for the interviewer when you go to your next job interview because you're going to blow their socks off with this knowledge. Crypto attack is back with the arrival of Marvin. Back in 1998, <laughs> Daniel Bleichenbacher, a Swiss cryptographer who currently works for Google, showed that a client of an SSL TLS server could use server error response info to decrypt messages encrypted with RSA's public key algorithm. Red Hat engineer Hubert Cario has discovered that most implementations of RSA PKCS number 1 version 1.5 are still vulnerable to his new version of the old attack, which he's named Marvin after the paranoid android from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. 
Karyo is provided as a tech script for those interested in testing their TLS systems. And all right, so I didn't quite get this. This is kind of weird. You every once in a while you'll see some vulnerability come up that's like 25 years old, uh, and it's pretty cool. So apparently, SSL TLS servers. Um, which, by the way, like when I read this, and I, I'd love another person's thought. Um, when I see this, my immediate thought is a server that is using SSL or TLS. Don't even get me started about why those names are what they are. It has to go back to like a Netscape Microsoft pissing match. But I'm thinking it's like the connections into the box are encrypted using this, not a server issuing certificates. Okay, so that's my first thing. It's about encrypted connections, not about a server. So like this, this wording is confusing. Second of all, they're saying that based on the response codes from a server that has SSL, TLS encrypted connections, you can send specific information, not a, just a regular transaction, but send specific types of packets and glean based on server error response messages because the server is trying to follow protocol and hook you up um, to learn about the padding and the data byte sequence, or excuse me, and um, the byte sequence to decrypt protected messages, right? Essentially attacking the encryption, right? If you can decrypt the messages without the key, that is broken encryption and that is an attack. It's been around for a long time. It's very interesting. Um, I try to like, um, <laughs> personally, when it comes to cryptography, I know it's one of the primary domains in cybersecurity. I tend to um, walk into a room, see cryptography like napping at the desk, and then I like quietly close the door and back away slowly. Okay. Like I know cryptography enough of like, you know, if it's not a broken algorithm, AES, right. RC4 for, you know, you know, um, like web traffic or whatever, like whatever it is, I know enough to know enough, but I don't crypto is like more math and not my jam. Um, and so I just typically tiptoe around it or I, defer to crypto math experts when it comes to crypto. So this is just interesting. I don't really know if there is an immediate concern here since this content has been out in various different ways for 25 years. So um, it's, it's difficult for me to explain what you can do operationally around this. I'd, I'd really have to dig in and think about it uh, honestly. But if you're working in the national security space um, or you know, some high level profile like Tesla or something like that, uh, you may want to um, give this research a read, but my my brain hurts thinking about it. Chrissy K loves her some research. So Chrissy K, uh, we'll, we'll engage Chrissy on all the research, uh, or the quant, um, excuse me, the crypto questions. All right, guys. That does it for today's cybersecurity headlines. But that does it for today's cybersecurity headlines, which means only one thing. If you were here just for the news, we are right at nine o'clock. And I'd love to thank all of you, first timers and long timers, for being here today. Before you go, it looks like Bobby Coffee, Bobby Coffee, has accepted the Squad uh, Simply Cyber Community Challenge. So look for Bobby Coffee's message on LinkedIn. And Jacob Quinton, thank you for playing and being part of it. I hope. Everybody goes and connects with Jacob Quinton on his crypto post. Um, okay, so really quickly, um, Joseph, we're going to switch to Josh. Actually, let's switch to Josh Jacking and then I'll answer Joseph Michelle's question. Guys, this has been episode 460 of the Daily Cyber Threat Briefing. Uh, really enjoyed all of you. I hope you come back tomorrow at 8 a.m. Eastern time. Remember, we've got the live stream tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. This guy, Gary Binder, is going to blow your mind. He, he's a really interesting guy. Um, but I'm Jerry. This is the Simply Cyber Daily Cyber Threat Brief. If you'd like to hang out, we're about to do jawjacking, which is a much more casual AMA type uh, stream. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, peace out, and I'll see you tomorrow at 8 a.m. Let's go. I'm getting better at uh, switching. I'm not, I'm not quite there yet, but I am getting better at switching. Let me put on some good midnight music. 
Let's do it. Uh, let's do... Yeah, wait, let's do this. All right, guys. So really quick, it, Joseph Michelle had a question in chat. Uh, and Joseph Michelle asked a question. I don't get the zero point story or worry. If you don't click on it or the body, when, where is the trigger? Okay, here's the deal. Let me share my screen. Where's the zero point story? Okay, so here's the deal. The risk here is, uh, Joseph Michelle, that threat actors are using this technique to circumvent email security gateways. The zero font isn't what the victim is going to click on. It's literally like imagine um, here. Let me let me let me pull up an. Uh, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what what's what's going on here. Let me. So look at this example, okay? This is just a random phishing email that I found. It's got all the hallmarks, right? There's an urgency. Your password will expire. Dear network user, little generic, so you might call it. You might detect it. There's a link here, right? Now, this email, a next-gen AI email security gateway, might see this immediately and say, bro, this is a phishing email, right? Say this URL right here, myuniversity.edu. But if you actually look at the hyperlink under it, it goes to some like, you know, domain generated domain name. That's a hot mess on fire. Clearly an issue. It, it can read and see the urgency. It can read and see the generic. The my university email account. Maybe it's some random Proton Mail account, right? So everything about this AI would say, "Whoa, this isn't good." Now imagine, if you will, that in between this and email, there's a whole bunch of words, um, like with zero font. That's just like gobbledygook about. Um, upcoming semesters or, you know, like someone right clicked and copy and pasted, select all copy pasted, like a syllabus, right? And then um, expire in 24 hours. Well, maybe it says will expire. Um, and then they added a bunch of font in between expire and in. Um, that doesn't make any sense, but it, it, it breaks that algorithm where it's like, oh, like expire and then some time stamp af right afterwards would indicate pushing urgency, right? So so the idea here is it's not to the human is basically going to fall for the the fish potentially, right? They could still know not to click on it. And that's why we do end user awareness training. This zero point attack, all it's really doing is attacking the email security gateway engines to bypass them, right? If I send a thousand emails out and 20 of them get through and get into victims inboxes, then I have, you know, a, a very small chance of successfully getting a victim, right? Like 20, let's say hundred emails and I send and, and two get in, right? So I got a 2% chance of getting a hit. Well, if I use this technique and I send it and I get 50 out of a hundred that go through because I fool the engines. Well, now I've got, I go up from 2% to a 50% chance. You see what I'm saying? And when you start extrapolating that to like tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of email accounts, um, you catch, you cast a much wider net and you're gonna catch a lot more victims. Okay, hopefully that answers that question. Okay, next question. Who measured CPEs? What are they for? Friendship House. We get this question a lot. In fact, um, mods, just as a, a, a note, um, we should add a... Um, Nightbot command that explains CPEs. Okay, so Friendship House, if you are, um, if you are a, um, if you hold a cybersecurity certification, like anything from ISC2, anything from ISACA, anything from, um, like SANS or whatever, right? I don't think CompTIA applies here. But one of the things you need to do is continuing education, right? You can't get a CISSP in 2005 and then go work on an oil rig as a, as a, as a you know, grease elbow person for 30 years. And then when your body's broken down from working the oil rigs, you come back and apply for jobs. And you're like, I'm a CISSP. What's up? And you haven't touched a computer in 25, 30 years, right? That makes no sense. So in order to maintain integrity-ish, um, these organizations require you not only to pay an annual fee, cash, but also to demonstrate that you're maintaining knowledge and 
professional engagement in the industry, and they do it through CPEs or continuing professional education credits. Now, there's a million different ways to get CPEs, but a lot of people don't do them. And then it'll be coming up to the when your uh, certificate or certification is for renewal. And then people start cramming. They start watching webinars for like one CPE. It's brutal. Okay. The Sa Simply Cyber Daily Cyber Threat Briefing, it's an hour long. So it really should be one CPE. Uh, it used to be shorter. So I just say half a CPE. But here's the thing. No one's going to, no one is going to deny that it's longer than 30 minutes, right? You might get pushback that it's an hour. So if it's a half a CPE, but it's every single day, you can do two and a half a week, 10 a month, right? Assuming a four week month, right? So the point here is you can get CPEs, you can maintain your certifications, and it doesn't have to be an arduous, painful tooth pull experience. You can have a good time. You can engage with others. You can learn, right? And I'm telling you, people, people know what's up. All right. All right, what, what else is going on? Hopefully everybody's... Uh... Oh, I see there is a CPU on. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have a resource like... Uh, Joseph, Michelle, I'm not sure what you're talking about there. Uh, what about Grease Lightning Person? Okay. Um... All right. Yeah, we'll have to check into those CPUs. What's up, Jesse Johnson? Good to see you. Congratulations again on the work that you're doing. Awesome. Guys, what's going on in my world? Um, just to share with you guys. Um, Eric Taylor will be the host of Simply Cyber Daily Cyber Threat Brief podcast this Friday. So if you know if you know Eric, you know he's a good person and he can definitely run the stream very well. Looking forward to that. Thanks, Luke Canfield. I appreciate that. Yeah, give me one second. I just want to um I just want to close my door. Hold on. All right. So, hey, here's a fun thing uh just to share with everybody. So, I, I I'm I'm obviously very busy. I have a speaking engagement in Tampa in October that I've been working on a deck for, and I'm keynoting Charleston B-Sides. Now, um, I'm super excited about both. Charleston B-Sides is November 4th. I also, Simply Cyber is also sponsoring Charleston B-Sides. Um, so we, you know, made a financial commitment uh, over there to support them. I love, I love Charleston B-Sides. I've been going for years. I take my kids. I'm, 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 Obviously, very, very, very uh, excited to be able to be in a position where we can support them financially. And uh, I woke up this morning. I was going to do a video. Um, a video. I was going to do a, a talk for my keynote on the importance and power and value of networking. But I, I got out of the shower this morning. And I'm like, oh, man, what a cool idea. So this is what I'm actually going to be doing. What Game of Thrones can teach us about cybersecurity? Okay. Winter is coming. Do you know what that means? Right of boom. Bad is coming. You know what you can do? You can be like a Stark and you can prep. You can do left of boom activities. You know what? You know who the Lannisters are? The business. Do you know why? Because <laughs> that's what they care about. You know who the Starks are? Sock analysts. You know who the White Walkers are? Threat actors. Dude, there's so many parallels. There's so many parallels. Lots of opportunity. You know who uh, Bjorn, Bjorn is, or Bjorn, uh, whoever that guy is, the one who was like the hired, uh, the hired hand that was like helping um, Tyrion for a lot of the movie, the the, the guy who was the cell sword. He's a, he's an MDR provider. He's a he's a he's a contractor, right? We got third party uh, providers out there. We've got all sorts of you know like dragons, which which could be you know um, something as powerful as like uh, Cobalt Strike, right? A dragon, right? It's used for good. It protects things. But if a threat actor gets a hold of it, like the White Walkers did, spoiler alert, um, you know, that's a hot mess on fire. So anyways, I think I think there's a lot of parallels. I think there's a lot of opportunity. I think it'll be a lot of fun talk. I was originally going to do um, what Wheel of Time can teach us about cybersecurity, but it's been so long since I read the books. I would have had to have done a lot of prep. Plus, Game of Thrones is way more ubiquitous a lot of people watch the hbo show oh by the way i will be throwing um 
the HBO show under the bus as far as like their last season goes and how there's a parallel there. So anyways, I'm happy to share that um, with you all. Um, David Campos asks, who's Carl? So um, David, we try not to have uh, too many um, inside jokes here, but Carl, I've been using for years. There's a show called Aqua Teen Hunger Force that I love. I love Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Well, when I talk about end users, now I don't poo-poo end users, okay? End users are the business. Our job is to help protect the business and to connect and support, you know, end users, right? So it's not to say, oh my God, like uh, this business would be so much secure if we just didn't have end users, right? Throwing shade at end users it means you're you're not doing your job well, right? Like what you should be doing is educating end users, engaging end users, putting end users in a position to succeed, uh, helping them achieve their goals in a way that is secure. But occasionally an end user clicks on something dumb. An end user is focused on their, their interests and how they get their work done, right? Dude, let's be real. Human nature, right? People are, I'm not saying they're selfish, but like anyone that goes to work for money is there to do the job they're getting paid for. They don't care about what you care about unless you make it part of it, right? So Carl is an end user and... Typically, you know, if someone clicks on something, someone does something silly, or we're talking about an opportunity to educate an end user, I will reference Carl essentially as an end user avatar. And then from Walking Dead, um, the, the the father there when he screams for his kid's name. That that's us. Like that is the Simply Cyber community screaming at an end user about like just shaking a fist at the sky. That's what that's what Carl is. So hopefully that was uh, where it was. So, a late 23 asks, can you do the Simply Cyber Challenge without the baton? There's nothing to stop you from doing that, a late, but, uh, you know, we, we don't really promote it, honestly, because it's, it's kind of, uh, we don't want to, like, saturate LinkedIn with it, right? It, it, it's kind of a special daily activity to come back. I mean, if you want the baton tomorrow, a late, you can certainly come back to the live and ask, um, and ask for that. Yes, Carl is also a junior admin that opens up everything to the world. Exactly. Um, is season eight a poorly... So Luke Canfield wants to know if my parallel to season eight was poorly written response plan tabletop. No, well, I mean, we could certainly do that. I, 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 it, my first thoughts, first blush is that season eight is where you do everything you can to set the business up for success. And they're so focused on like playing a round of golf on Friday or they're so focused on, you know, like... Uh, I've seen this so many times, right? Like, I, I just, I literally just, at this conference I just went to, I, I was given a perfect case study, okay? Pandemic hits. Telehealth needs to go full-time in healthcare. This hospital, I'm not going to name names, this healthcare system already had a telehealth solution. They had paid for it. They had trained all their staff on it. It, it was in place. All they had to do was, like, roll it out to, like, basically they had a telehealth practice and then they needed to roll that out, scale it up for the, you know, kind of the entire healthcare system because now there was a lot more services that were going to be done over telehealth. They had the training, they had the staff, they had the inside knowledge, they had the integrations into the application in EHR already, right? But the CEO of the company had a big, you know, had a big for zoom i think they knew the zoom people or they were invested in zoom whatever it was they were all in on zoom and they went they went to they didn't even talk to it they didn't talk to telehealth they just went all in on zoom and and like bought it and then you know held a meeting to talk about how are we going to roll this out like what's okay operational people tell me how we're rolling zoom out and it was like why are we doing zoom like this is stupid and uh it didn't matter okay so like this is a perfect example where like one person or you know a couple people in a higher up position can have a major negative impact because of boneheaded micro you know narrow decisions that isn't in the best interest of the organization you know the two davids right they just wanted to get on to the next season they didn't have source material from george rr R. martin so they just F it. Like, let's just, 
let's just throw something together, right? Like something very whatever, without any thought to the fan base, to the, the, the overall legacy of the show, the bigger picture. It was much more microtransactional for what mattered to the two Davids on getting through that project and on to the next one. That's it, my initial thoughts on it. Oh, base case is here. I actually want to share this with everybody. Um, thank you, base, for showing up. I, I um, <clears throat> For the uh, 260 of you that are still here right now, I just want to share this with you. Base case um, is a mod. He's been around... Uh, forever with the Simply Cyber community. Uh, big fan. He helps with audio engineering. Anytime there's an audio issue, <laughs> which many of you are well aware I have, Base Case is the you know superhero that comes in and helps me get sorted out. Um, he's, he's amazing. He has started uh, live streaming on his YouTube channel, playing World of Haiku gameplays. You can see here Base um, he's got the live, and then he jumps into the game and stuff. So if you're interested in hanging out with a really cool dude and a really cool channel and cool streams, uh, come check out Base Case. He's streaming every day at 2.30 p.m. Pacific time, I believe, Base. Um, and, um, yeah, it just, it'd just be cool. So, and it's for a good cause too. I, I, I forget, I'm sorry, Base, if you can tell me in chat or tell chat what's up. He's doing this for a specific uh, intent and purpose. It's not just um, him streaming, right? There's there's like a, there's a, there's a something behind it. Um, it doesn't say it here, but I know it's, I know it's, there's a, there's something behind it as well. Okay. A, a really good initiative. <clears throat> All right. What else we got here? What are we at? 921? A couple more minutes and then I got a boogie. Oh my gosh, guys. Whoa. Whoops. Um, what, what else is going on? Oh, so you guys know I'm working on the Cyber 101 course. I'm doing another course that's almost done with a, uh, a company. That, so here's something that you guys may or may not know. I've been working on a course, but it's a completely... Um, what's it called? Commissioned. The course is completely commissioned. It will. It is entirely owned by this client. I wrote the curriculum. I wrote the slides. I'm delivering all of the content. I wrote the quiz questions. It's 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 for all intents and purposes. It's a complete course that I wrote and delivered. It it is almost done, and it will be delivered to the client, and they will offer the course. Under their platform, the course will be free. It is a five-hour course on everything that you want to know about continuous threat exposure management. Okay, which I know is not something I talk about often, but I do have many <laughs> eclectic interests, right? So that course is coming out soon. I'm I'm super pumped to be uh, near completion with that. I've got the Cyber 101 course. Now, the third thing I want to share with you guys, because I just saw Base Case in his channel, one thing I would love to share with you guys is that I started and then stopped, but I'm going to continue doing it, um, a course on how you can make a cybersecurity, well, how you can really make any YouTube channel, but how to make a cybersecurity YouTube channel to, like, basically brand yourself, Okay. We talk about branding and you know blog posts and LinkedIn and connections and establishing presence and there's a lot of great ways to do it, okay? But I just want to tell you, in my I've been doing YouTube for three years and Simply Cyber has grown into something unbelievably amazing. It it does make revenue. I have met a lot of people in the industry. Um, I qu I've quit my job. <laughs> you know what I mean? My last two jobs I didn't um, have to apply for. Now, I can't promise everybody that they're going to have the same results, right? I've got many, many years in the industry. I have many years of academic knowledge learning and stuff like that. But I have seen the power of having a YouTube channel. One of my students, I have, I have 10 alpha students going through the course, okay? One of my students is not a cybersecurity professional. This student is a marketing professional. This student has started his channel. He has 30 subscribers. That's it. Okay. You're like, what, what, what? big deal. Listen to me. 
he literally is getting contacted by people watching his video for work. They're literally calling him. Like he, he, he texted me this morning. He's like, it's unbelievable. He goes, I can't believe how many people are reaching out to me, CEOs of companies. And they're like, I need you to help me do what you're talking about. Tell me how much, right? Now, again, your mileage may vary. Not all results are the same, but he's following my course. He's doing what I'm su suggesting and he's getting results. It's freaking awesome. Okay. It's freaking awesome. So I'm super excited about that cybersecurity YouTube course. And um, I just haven't had time to do it, but it's like a it's like a pet project that I can't wait to work on. And if anyone out there is super into wanting to do a YouTube channel, not knowing how to do it, my course is going to take you from zero to hero. Basically, I get you stood up right away and then give you kind of like an amateur level, you know, setup and workflows and experience. And then I explain how you can like level up, you know, your technology, your your hardware your workflows, start outsourcing crap, how to get money, how to get sponsors, uh, if you want to do that, okay? But at the end of the day, when someone Googles you, right? You, you put in a resume for an application, someone Googles you. Dude, if you have a YouTube channel where you're talking about being a SOC analyst, SOC analyst labs, you doing work throughs, you do, like whatever it is, they're going to be like, holy crap. It's basically like, it's basically like asynchronously interviewing for a job and it's doing it for you while you sleep. You, you're picking up what I'm putting down that, and that's just putting all the value that's non-monetary, right? There's monetary value too, but I will say in all reality, like my first year, my first year, like 12 months on YouTube, I made like $2,000, right? So it's not, and, and I was putting videos out weekly. So uh, if you're trying to like go to YouTube to like quit your job and make money, uh, that is not the case. In fact, YouTube doesn't even really pay that much, honestly. Um, I, like I don't even monetize the morning threat briefing from a ad perspective, right? Okay. I'm, I just wanted to go into that a little bit. Uh, casually Joseph, what's the venue for Charleston B sides? It is not at the beach this year, Joseph. It is at the college of Charleston. It's been at the college of Charleston many times in years past. That's almost where it's always been one year. They had it at the sands down at Folly beach, but, um, the college of Charleston is a great venue. There's like multiple, uh, there's like, there's, there's, there's a classroom where there's talks. There's the main auditorium where the keynote will be and other talks. And then there's like a main hallway in the middle for all the vendors and stuff. Because I sponsored, I, I get like a vendor booth. I'll probably just set up like the Simply Cyber Flag that Base Case got me. Thank you, Base Case. And um, I don't know. I, like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> maybe just put a, a, a <laughs> put a poster board with the URL to Simply Cyber and just call it a day. Hey, Gerald, or hey, Jerry, internal stranger says, haven't been here for two and a half months. What's happening since middle of July? Oh my gosh, internal stranger. First of all, it's good to have you back. Hope everything's well. And oi, 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 internal stranger down in Australia. Uh, I do want to show this to you, internal stranger, because this is a pretty big deal, okay? So since July, I quit my job and went full time uh, with, with, you know, Simply Cyber, right? It, it, to say Simply Cyber's a YouTube channel is not even appropriate, okay? It's way more. It's a community. It's a movement. It's it's an, it's an experience. It's an initiative. And it's way bigger than me. But internal stranger, all I would ask you is watch this live stream, okay? I'm doing a quarterly town hall meeting. I see the Simply Cyber community as my boss, right? So I'm accountable to all of you. And I will be doing these quarterly meetings where I tell you what I'm working on, what you can expect in the next 90 days. The next one is like December 6th or 7th, where I will do a another you know quarterly all hands meeting for the community and report report on myself and hold myself accountable. So if you want to know what's going on, internal stranger, this it's a one hour video. I know that's asking a lot. I think the first 30 minutes is me briefing, and then the last 30 minutes is Q and A with uh, the community. So if you only have time for 30 minutes, I'd recommend that. But this is this is the answer to your question. What has been happening since middle of July? This video is going to tell you all of that. It's been substantial what we've been doing. <clears throat> um, okay, what, what else is going on? You guys are so great. Doing B-sides, Blitz with Augusta, Atlanta, Greenville. There's some good B-sides on the 4th that would be great to attend. Yeah. So Luke Canfield... Um, 
B-Sides Augusta is fantastic. It's a fantastic B-Sides. It's one of the best ones I... Well, it's one of the better ones I've been to. B-Sides Greenville this year. Um, Heath Adams is keynoting it, which is great. Greenville's... Uh, uh, don't sleep on Greenville, guys. Greenville's got some hot action going on the cyber uh, security space. John Hoyt from Clemson's going to be up there. Love him. Um, B-Sides Atlanta, first-timer. Guys, hey, really quickly, don't forget... Um, Don't forget, let me change this really quickly. Don't forget on the um, on the Simply Cyber Discord server, there is a channel right here, conference meetup, all conference talks, okay? Use this channel to find other people who are going to be at your events, right? Like, hey, anybody going to B-Sides um, Atlanta, anybody going to B-Sides Augusta, et cetera? Um, and giddy up on that, right? That reminds me, uh, Kimberly. Kimberly, can we connect right after this? I, I want to get uh, Christina access to what you asked me about. I, I, I've been so underwater and overwhelmed, unfortunately, guys. Guys, <laughs> I hope you realize, like, I, I am. I went full time to get more time, but like instantly underwater. So I am working my A off. So if this is for the mods too, like if you message me. Uh, and I don't get back to you right away. It's it's not personal. Please either follow up, like DM me again, or like grab me by the collar and shake me. Um, so yeah, you can ask for Nightbot to do Discord. Um, no, so I will not be doing a meetup in Tampa, Chrissy K. Um, I'm gonna fly in. So I give a talk on like the tw the twenty fifth, maybe. Let me look at my calendar. I mean, maybe we could do a meetup. I don't know. Let me let me take a look really quickly. It would be a quick meetup, really. So I speak on the 25th. I fly in on the 24th. Okay. So if I did a meetup, it would be like a happy hour type thing or a dinner. Um, I don't know. M maybe. Yeah, actually, why not? Hell, hell let's do that. Um, I'm going to put it on my calendar right now. Doink. Um... Simply cyber meetup question mark. I'll um I'll 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 communicate out more about that later at Chrissy K because I don't I haven't got my flight yet. I gotta figure out when I'm getting in. There's no direct flight, which totally sucks. So okay. Alright. Guys, that's gonna do it for the stream today. I hope you got value from it. Jaw Jackin's always all about good times. Dude Hour and a half. It goes quick, y'all. I'll tell you what. It goes real quick. To the 239 of you that are still here, thanks so much. Definitely appreciate it. Um, and uh, thank you. Yeah, I'm going to go. Oh, Alex, can they record the Game of Thrones? I'll, I'll ask. I'll ask. Uh, Brian Waterbury asking about the studio. Very close to done. Very close to done. I'm hoping to be in it in the next two weeks. Honestly, like we have just like touch up painting and then moving my equipment in. Um, so and moving the equipment in is not trivial because I, I've got to set it up and then I have to buy a rug. We got to get some like no noise absorption stuff going in in there. So I'm hoping in the next two weeks, though. OK, trust me, <laughs> you guys will know when I get in there. I can't I can't wait. Super pumped. Uh, Fallon Watts, WGU. I, I like WGU. I will say I, I, did, I haven't done a curriculum evaluation of WGU, but the individuals that I've connected with from WGU, like um, Brady McNulty, for example, great people, good effort. I think it's like anything else where you get out of it what you put into it. I know they have a strong cybersecurity alumni network. That's pretty good. So WGU, uh, um, I'll give a thumbs up. All right, guys. Um, thanks, Matt McDaniel. Love you, too. All right, guys. Coffee cup cheers. All the best to everybody. Be good. Stay secure. And I'll see you tomorrow at 8 a.m. Eastern time. Bye, everybody.
everybody. I hope you enjoyed that content. Keep the cybersecurity train going by connecting with the other Simply Cyber community resources. We have the Discord server that's lively and always keeps the conversation going. You can connect with me directly on LinkedIn. And also every single weekday morning on the Simply Cyber channel, we're doing live daily cyber threat briefings, 8 a.m. Eastern time, as well as Thursday at 4.30 p.m. We're doing live stream interviews with industry experts, and we produce videos that we push out every Wednesday morning. I'm Jerry from Simply 